Once again, welcome everyone uh, to our consensus meeting today. Um, it's certainly uh, a landmark event um, to have experts of, um, of your caliber uh, to come together nationally and internationally represented uh, for this important question of the role of genetic testing for inherited prostate cancer. And I'm honored to be a co-chair and work with Dr. Leonard Gamella and Dr. Karen Knudsen in this um, really important effort to create and centralize guidelines uh, for genetic testing for inherited prostate cancer. So why is this consensus conference needed, and, and why now in uh, 2017? And if we trace, uh, uh, in general, what's happened on the scientific side um, over the last um, many years, we look at the BRCA story, where uh, back in the late 1990s, uh, we saw that there was a higher risk of prostate cancer um, observed in families that were um, BRCA positive and, and really had a higher representation of breast cancer in those families, as well as higher rates of founder BRCA mutations and risk for prostate cancer in uh, males of Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry. And those data continue to be um, uh, uh, su supplemented and confirmed going forward. What we really saw in the mid to late 2000s is um, the association of BRCA2 with aggressive prostate cancer and prostate cancer of poor outcomes. Um, subsequently, uh, over the last one and a half to two years, we have seen um, multiple tumor sequencing studies, uh, particularly performed in the metastatic castrate resistant uh, prostate cancer setting, that have identified um, substantial rates of um, inherited BRCA mutations, particularly BRCA2 mutations. Along the same line, we started to see other genes that could potentially be uh, implicated in contributing to prostate cancer risk. So uh, there were a few studies that looked at higher rates of prostate cancer and reported on higher rates of prostate cancer in families that had Lynch syndrome or hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome. And subsequently, Additional studies were looking at um, what are the genes that could be responsible for um, if prostate cancer is involved in Lynch syndrome. Um, in the mid to late 2000s, there was an onslaught of genome-wide association studies that reported on multiple common variants um, of risk uh, for prostate cancer that modestly raised the risk for prostate cancer. And there were multiple variants. Um, really around 100 approximately, that were identified for association to prostate cancer risk, and these were common genetic variants. A landmark finding was the uh, identification of HOXB13, identified as the first hereditary prostate cancer gene uh, reported in 2012. And this was identified from families that had um, young onset prostate cancer and significantly raised the risk for prostate cancer as well. And then, as I mentioned, um, the identification of um, DNA repair mutations from tumor sequencing studies um, in metastatic prostate cancer setting. And so with this um, increasing information on the scientific side of the potential genetic contribution to prostate cancer, we were also looking at, well, what's happening on the clinical side with our ability to test and guidelines for testing? And the NCCN uh, high-risk breast and ovarian guidelines started including prostate cancer in their BRCA evaluation criteria around 2013 and have subsequently included it going forward, uh, particularly for a family history of um, young breast cancer, uh, ovarian cancer, and pancreatic cancer, as well as uh, prostate cancer of a higher Gleason score. Another very important landmark event nationally was the uh, U.S. Supreme Court um, stating and, and ruling that uh, naturally isolated uh, DNA was no longer patentable. And this opened the door for genetic testing laboratories to really be able to start doing BRCA1 and 2 testing. And that, coupled with next generation sequencing technology, really had uh, the takeoff of multi-gene panel testing. So the ability to test multiple genes at the same time. And what we have seen emerge now are multiple prostate cancer panels, gene panels, uh, that are commercially available for testing. So if we look at this growth in the science, the growing knowledge of the genetic contribution to inherited prostate cancer, and the increasing capability of doing genetic testing for prostate cancer from these commercially available uh, prostate cancer gene panels, 
we are at a unique intersection of this growth of science and the testing capability that's come along with it. And therefore, we needed a consensus conference. We needed to have some guidelines drafted where we can centralize our, the application of uh, genetic evaluation for inherited prostate cancer. And that's where uh, we are here today for the uh, Philadelphia Prostate uh, Consensus 2017. Uh, what we noted uh, through our experience, at least in, in terms of um, genetic evaluation for prostate cancer in our um, GU genetics clinic, is that uh, there is um, a lack of guidance for comprehensive uh, evaluation, uh, genetic evaluation for prostate cancer. The guidelines that have been um, put forth have been a helpful starting point, but from a comprehensive nature, uh, there has been a lack in the field, as well as uh, a gap in how these new genetic tests can inform prostate cancer screening, treatment, and management. So um, we are here at this consensus conference going to address uh, the flow from uh, which patients should be referred <laughs> for uh, genetic counseling, how is the genetic counseling process uh, going to be relevant to men with or at risk for prostate cancer? Uh, which genetic tests or genes should we be thinking about? Um, and how this all impacts management for men with prostate cancer um, who have mutations, men with prostate cancer without mutations currently identified, and also for men without prostate cancer. We have an incredible uh, lineup of speakers uh, to talk about various different um, topics that are going to be very relevant to us thinking about um, these guidelines and drafting these guidelines. Um, we have an overview of contemporary genetic counseling, um, followed by practical considerations of genetic counseling and genetic testing, um, an entire session devoted to prostate cancer genomics and genetics, and then launching forward into the clinical application of uh, prostate cancer genomics and genetics. We will finish up the um, speaking portion of the consensus with a review of some of the ongoing prostate cancer uh, genetics clinical trials, and then move forward into the uh, consensus topics uh, voting and deliberation. So we really ask that you, when you're listening to these talks, is to uh, listen with a focus of how this can impact um, this entire process from referral to counseling, testing, and management. And the overall questions that we're going to be thinking of addressing are who should be referred for genetic counseling and genetic testing to assess for inherited prostate cancer, what criteria should be considered um, when we're thinking of recommending genetic testing for inherited prostate cancer, what genetic test options uh, should be used and discussed with patients for the assessment of inherited risk, how should these test results inform prostate cancer screening, and then should specific genetic test results inform uh, management of early stage localized prostate cancer, advanced or high risk disease, and metastatic prostate cancer. As Dr. Gamella already mentioned, our post-consensus conference um, process will be um, focused on uh, drafting a manuscript for these guidelines uh, for publication. We will also be following up with all of you for any additional thoughts and deeper insights. As we know, this is a first step, and um, you know, there's a lot more uh, granularity to this information than and can happen in two days. Um, we will also be uh, seeking endorsements from professional organizations or, and, and having their thoughts on this uh, area as well, and uh, moving forward with um, uh, presentations and commentaries uh, on this process. Again, we'd like to thank our sponsors who have helped to make this conference possible. And uh, that's all I'd like to go over today for the overview. Thank you very much again for being here.